Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This video module is about um, uh, long-run production under uh, perfect uh, competition. You will recall that we started our analysis with simple supply and demand uh, curves. Uh, this is a graph something uh, like this. That is, we developed a um, uh, supply curve and said underlying it was increasing uh, marginal uh, cost. We developed the demand curve and suggested that underlying it is diminishing uh, marginal uh, benefit. We, we pointed out that in a highly competitive market, in a perfectly competitive market, the price will move toward P1 because if the price is above that, you get a surplus. If the price is below uh, P1, you get a shortage uh, in the market. The price is set at P1. The individual producer must accept or reject that price. The individual perfect competitor is a price a taker. The demand curve facing the individual producer looks uh, like this. That is, is, it is perfectly horizontal. It is perfectly elastic. That is, the producer has a price of P1, and the producer can decide to how many units uh, that it will sell uh, at this uh, price P1. If it tries to sell at a price even a little bit above uh, P1, uh, customers can move to one of the other numerous producers uh, in the market or other producers who will enter the market to take over uh, this firm's uh, market and sell at a price of uh, P1. We then took this demand curve and combined it with a, a set of cost curves that look like this. We developed those cost curves at some uh, in, with some uh, care. We noted that the perfect competitor in the short run will produce quantity uh, Q1. That is, will produce where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, which in the case of the perfect competitor is equal uh, to the price. In this case, the firm can be making profits equal uh, to that. Well, the question that we want to address in this one is what's going to happen uh, in a perfectly competitive market uh, in the uh, long run. Well, we have taken up uh, the structure of the long run uh, cost curve. Now, I know this graph is very messy. Uh, we developed it in another uh, video module. We basically said there are numerous uh, scales of operation that for a while a firm may uh, benefit from economies of scale. Uh, that is, its average cost will be declining, its marginal cost will be below that. Then beyond some point, there's going to be uh, diseconomies of scale normally associated with uh, growing uh, communication problems, growing uh, principal uh, agency problems. Once you get this long run uh, average cost curve, you can then deduce the long run uh, marginal cost curve. We're now in a position to combine the long run uh, curve analysis uh, with the perfect competitor's uh, demand curve that we just uh, uh, pointed out. And this is a simplified version of that uh, graph that we showed. In one of the graphs, we basically were assuming an, a scale equal to ATC1, where the firm would be producing a quantity a Q1, would be making this much in the way of profits. But this is when the firm is only on one scale of operation. When it is uh, thinking about uh, the long run. It can vary its scale of operation and, as we said, can, can uh, achieve economies of, of scale. Indeed, it might want to um, uh, move over to where there are diseconomies of scale. The individual firm might then think, well, if I expand my scale of operation, I can, my profit maximizing position for the long run uh, will be uh, Q2. If I do indeed achieve uh, a, a much larger scale of operation, my profits can then uh, go up. They can go up to uh, a box that looks like this. Why? Because uh, the firm can multiply price times Q2 and get revenues, which means that total revenues will be 0, P1, A, Q2. Uh, then it can multiply the average total cost or average cost is really the way it should be, average cost of AC1 uh, and uh, get and multiply times Q2 and get total cost, 0 AC1 uh, B uh, Q2. Uh, 
Well, the problem that the individual firm has got to uh, recognize, uh, one is, is that if there is this tremendous profit potential from expanding uh, the scale of operation uh, for that one firm, then all other firms can be expected to expand uh, their scale of operation. And if they expand their scale of operation, then that means that the uh, supply curve uh, that we were discussing in, in this graph has got to uh, increase uh, in the long run. And of course, this means that the supply curve can move in, in this direction. And of course, when that happens, it means that the price can fall to uh, P2 as the quantity expands to uh, Q2. Well, if the price in the market uh, falls because all firms are taking advantage of economies of scale and trying to achieve the greater profit, then it follows that uh, back in this graph, uh, this demand curve that the individual producer faces, which is equal to the marginal revenue curve, uh, it is also uh, going to fall. And indeed, it's possible that the demand curve uh, the overall market supply can increase so much that the price moves all the way down uh, to, say, D2, which of course means that the firm would be producing there and it would be incurring uh, losses equal uh, to uh, that. So the firm, in, in contemplating expanding its scale of operation to uh, quantity uh, Q2, has got to realize that other firms might indeed uh, be expanding their scale of, of operation. And that, of course, can mean that the price can fall, which, of course, means that the firm has got to have second thoughts about expanding the scale all the way uh, to here, which means uh, it's, going, it's going to restrict um, uh, its scale of operation because one can imagine that with freedom of entry, the actual curve is going to move to where the equilibrium price in the long run is going to move the demand curve to something like uh, uh, P2, uh, P, uh, uh, in which case uh, the firm would be producing right there at quantity Q3. Uh, now notice the price is equal to the average cost at that point, which means that the, uh, that the firm will be making only normal uh, profits. It will only be covering its cost, assuming normal profit is a part of the, of the uh, cost structure. Moral of the story is that if the price is above P2, then there are going to be firms, there's going to be profit to be made uh, in the long run, and the firms, firms will be moving into the market. If the price is below P2, that means firms will be losing money, and it means that in this uh, market setting that we discussed earlier, it means that the supply uh, will contract, and when that supply contracts because there's been overproduction, uh, the price will go up. Well, the moral of the story is that the uh, price should adjust to where, in the long run, it settles at the minimum of the long run, uh, long run average uh, uh, cost curve. In that sense, the firm uh, is efficient. Uh, the moral of, of the analysis, again, is that if there are economies of scale, uh, firms have got to uh, take advantage of them. Because if they refuse to take advantage of the economies of scale, uh, they can reason that other firms will take advantage of the economies of scale. The market supply will increase. The price of the good uh, can uh, go down. And that can leave firms that don't expand their scale of operation with a high cost and with a price below their cost and uh, such firms who refuse to take advantage of the economies of scale uh, can be run out of business. Uh, thank you for being with me.